Okay, now we're ready to animate. For this, I'm going to turn my bridge model back on, and I'm going to move my car all the way to the beginning of the bridge. Now you'll remember from previous videos, we talked about the timeline. As we scrub through our timeline, we're moving forwards and backwards in time. We are seeing individual frames, and it takes 24 of those frames to make a second of animation. So in order for us to animate this car, we have to give Maya some instructions. We have to tell it on frame one, I want it to be in one location, and then later on another frame, I want it to be somewhere else. The shortcut key we use to give Maya this instruction is S. Currently, my car is at one end of the bridge, and I want to animate it moving to the other end of the bridge. So on frame one, I will select the control, and I'll hit S. Watch what happens to my channel box when I do that. So I hit S, and I got a little red tick mark on my timeline, and all of the channels in my channel box turned red as well. When we set a keyframe in Maya, we're creating a marker in time on all of these values. What we're saying is that on frame one, I want my translate X to be 27.629, and I want all of these other values to be zero and one. Now, if I go to a different point in my timeline, let's take it all the way to the end on frame 120, I haven't given Maya any other instructions about where this vehicle should be. If I were to move the car all the way to the other end of the bridge, it appears I've told Maya to put it somewhere else, but I haven't set a marker in time. So if I start scrubbing my timeline, the car will just go back to the beginning of the bridge. Instead, I have to move the car, and then I have to press the S key one more time in order to set a keyframe. Now I have two keyframes. I have a keyframe on frame one that has the car at the beginning of the bridge, and a keyframe on frame 120 that has the car at the end of the bridge. Maya uses these two pieces of information to figure out the other 118 keyframes as best as it can. So you'll see that if I hit play, my car will drive from one end of the bridge to the other. Now suppose I wanted to make my car drive around an object. Suppose there's a obstacle in the middle of my bridge, and my car needs to swerve around this obstacle. Well, all Maya needs is a couple more pieces of information. I may want my car to start swerving here, so that means I need to tell Maya on frame 44, I still want the car to be here. And on frame 70, I want my car to be, well, let's go to 75. I want my car to be here, but I don't want my car to hit this block. I want it to kind of swerve to one side. So I can hit S again, and now you'll see my car sort of drives around that block. Now, to me, that's still feeling a little stiff because my car is sort of sliding to the side. You'll see that as it turns here, both the front and the back tire sort of slide. And so what I might do is rotate my car and hit S again. And then again, I will rotate my car here and hit S again. And now what I have is an animation of my car driving and swerving around this block.